What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today we are talking about camera apps, specifically the brand new Fuji X app. And for a long time, camera apps have kind of just really sucked. There's never been a good first party camera app. They've always had issues, they've always crashed. The live view always sucked. You could barely trigger photos. If you were lucky, you might get one in every like 30 to actually trigger and that one was so laggy that nothing would ever work. Camera apps have sucked for a really long time. And there have been some great third party apps by just regular people who wanna develop an app that doesn't suck that are far superior and work with a plethora of cameras in both photo and video modes. So why can't camera companies make good first party apps? So today I wanted to show you what all the hype about the Fuji X app is and if it's warranted. So here I have my trusty X100V and I've already updated it and paired it with the phone so everything is good to go and I've been using it for about a week now so I can give you my honest thoughts. The app is fairly simple, there's not that much to it. You have a remote control function which you can just use as a camera shutter which is really nice if you want to. I press it and there is minimal lag between me actually pushing the button and the camera actually triggering the shutter, which is really, really good. So you're not wondering whether or not you actually took the photo. You can actually rely on this camera remote, which I really appreciate. Now, the big selling point for me about this app is the image transfer. As you can see, the camera will establish a Wi-Fi connection with your phone so it can actually transfer those larger images over to your phone. I am disappointed that this doesn't accept raw file transfers, so you do have to be shooting JPEG but I'll take that over nothing. But as you can see here, I can just select which images I want to download to my phone and it'll just start the transfer, which is great. And as you can see, I now have those full res JPEGs that I took on my X100V transferred over to my phone in just a matter of seconds. And I think that is so convenient when you want to just post something quick to your story or airdrop some photos to your friends that you know aren't going to need that much editing. And I really love that. On the flip side of the camera transfer, we have the live view. And here's where I think the greatest upgrade in this app happens over its predecessor. As you can see here, I have full manual control over my camera settings, so I can adjust the shutter speed, I can adjust the f-stop, I can adjust the ISO, all from my phone, which is actually very convenient, and it's very instantaneous, and it works really, really well. You can change the film simulation right here if you so wish, which is great. You can change your white balance if you so wish. You can turn the flash on or off. You can set a timer, and then at the end of that, if you want to switch to the video mode, you can now actually record video and you have that same control over everything else. You have the aperture, you have the shutter speed. And with this, you can actually get a one over 48th shutter speed, which is really awesome that this camera is capable of doing that because very rarely do you get that actual perfectly double shutter speed for your frame rate. Editor Mark here. I just wanted to chime in and say two things. The first of which is that throughout the app, I didn't find a single way to trigger the ND filter that is on the Fuji X100V. This is not surprising to me at all because this is the only camera in Fuji's lineup that actually has that capability. So of course they're not going to have that feature specific to this camera because nothing else in their lineup has that. So that doesn't really surprise me. The second thing is that I completely forgot to show you how I was selecting the focus points with the app. So here you can see me just double tapping on the different areas and it'll pull focus using the AFS method. You can't use AFC, which is a bit unfortunate, but the AFS is pretty accurate, as you can see here. It doesn't really miss, and you can just get it to where you want it to be. I did find that I had to double tap the screen. A single tap didn't seem to do the trick most of the time, so a double tap is the way you want to go. But aside from that, I was pretty happy with the focusing performance of the iPhone app. Aside from the snappy full manual controls, you actually get the best latency in live view that I've ever seen on a camera app. This thing is insane. It has a really high refresh rate. It is zero latency, like it looks Great. For normal people just using this app, I think this is wonderful that you can actually see yourself in real time with little to no latency and you don't have to worry about something happening and having like a three to six to 10 second delay when it's coming up on your phone. So that to me is a huge improvement and I absolutely love that. One thing I did notice is that even if you have the camera set to AFC, it does not actually enable that in the app. You are stuck with AFS, which in the grand scheme of things is okay. It would be nice to have AFC when you're using the app, but AFS, if you're just doing selfies and whatnot, there's not enough depth of field, especially on this lens that you're gonna be missing focus. It would be nice if it tracked you, especially for video mode, but you know, 
it is what it is, it's not too bad, and it's nice for framing, making sure everything is good, and overall, I think this app achieves what it wanted to do. Is it the greatest thing since Swiss cheese? No, but I think it shows that a camera company is able to give us the bare minimum well. I think that's all it really needed to achieve for anyone to actually care about this, and this is a very welcome update that should have been around for the past 10 years, and I don't understand why we're just now finally getting this very, very basic but welcome update. So if you're a Fuji user who has bought a camera in the past three years or so, this update will be compatible with your camera and it is a very welcome update. So no more do you have that really bad camera remote app that never worked and it was impossible to transfer files. This one works pretty smoothly and I've had minimal issues with it. And the issues I do have, I've come to expect and I'm just grateful it works the vast majority of the time and not the opposite of that. But I wanna know what you guys think. Are you gonna be using this brand new Fuji X app? Do you think it is an improvement over its predecessor? Do you think that this marks a upward trajectory for first party camera apps in the near future? Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Mark Steiner and I will see you next time.